Hey everybody, welcome back to Pizza Legends Battles. In this quick and focused video today, we're gonna build our teams component. The teams components sit on top of the screen and show the health of each pizza on each team. You can glance at this to get a feel for how the battle's going. The starting code is linked below if you've missed anything. Let's get started. So switching is in, we have multiple combatants per team, but we don't have anything on the screen that's really telling us that. We only know that because we've been looking at the state data under the hood. You remember in the first video, we set up a JavaScript file and a CSS file for a Teams component, the little pizza indicators that would sit up here? Let's go ahead and fill in that part now. Okay, so back in the repo, I'll look for Team.js, and it's empty right now, but let's go ahead and start filling it in. So it's gonna be a class, it's gonna have an instructor, it's gonna have one of those create element methods. It's gonna have an init method. We've seen all this before. And just like with our combatant element, we're gonna add an updater method so that when things change in the battle, we can rerun this and then the screen will update. We're gonna pass two different things into this team component. The first is gonna be the ID of the team. So that'll be either player or enemy. And the next is gonna be the name of the character that we're fighting against. So like in Pokemon terms, this would be the Pokemon trainer's name. In our case, it's gonna be the pizza chef's name. So that'll be name. Let's save these to the class. This component's gonna show a little bit of information for each pizza on the team. And so we're gonna keep track of each pizza in our own combatants array. It's gonna start empty, but as we initialize this component, we're gonna add pizzas to it on the fly. Now moving down to the create element method, I'm gonna bring in some code here. First, we're gonna create our div element and give it the team class so it matches up with the class name here. Then we're gonna add a data attribute to it, data team with the value of the team that we're on, again, player or enemy. This is just for CSS styling so that we can style one on the left and one on the right. So now we need to iterate through our combatants and create one icon for each pizza on our team. So I'll say this.combatants.foreach dot for each combatant. Each combatant is gonna be a sub div with an SVG icon inside it. So let's create our container for each one. It's gonna be another div. We're gonna add a data attribute to each combatant that has the ID of each one so we know how to update it. If we know that a certain ID is now dead, we're gonna to wanna to change the appearance of the icon that we're showing, and so we need to know which icon to update. This is how we're gonna know. Now finally, I'm gonna bring in the icon markup for the pizzas here, and we'll talk through it. Now for the record, this is way too much code to copy down manually. I definitely don't recommend that. I don't even know if that would be really possible. Instead, you should seek out the code download link in the description below and grab this code from there if you wanna follow along exactly. I'll link a card to a different video that shows how I come up with this markup too. It basically involves grabbing a PNG image, dropping it in a tool, and that tool will give you back an SVG path. That's all I've done here. So let's talk through how this works. The first three paths here are the basic shape and color of our normal pizza appearance. These three will show when everything is alive and good. Next, we have a little active arrow that sits underneath these top three paths. There's a class on here called Active Pizza Indicator. CSS is gonna only show this path for one pizza icon, only the active one. Finally, we have three more paths down here with the class dead pizza. If this pizza's HP is zero or less than zero, we're gonna go ahead and overlay these three paths, which happen to sit right on top of these three paths. And that will end up changing the final appearance of the icon. Now it's really important to me to show you this technique of working with pixel art and SVGs specifically because you can use the state of your JavaScript application to change the paths or toggle different things on the paths. You could even change colors or add animations. It's potentially a lot more powerful than working with like baked PNGs, for example. These will also be perfectly performant and very crisp on screen. So let's tidy up just for a bit here. And then after we're done creating that HTML, we can go ahead and add it to our element. And so within the for each loop, the last thing we'll do is add this icon child to our element container. Now let's just focus on getting this on screen before we worry about all this updating and all that stuff. So I'll start to fill out the init here. First, we're gonna call this dot create element. Then we are gonna update it. Of course, for us right now, it's not gonna do anything, but in theory, we wanna update it as soon as we put it on the screen. And then as usual, whatever container was passed into init here, we're gonna append this component to that container. So we'll say container dot append child this dot element, making sure it's all right here. Let's pop over to battle.js now. And we're actually gonna create two instances of these teams components, one for the player and one for the enemy. So I'll come down to our init method here. 
I'm going to say this dot player team is going to be a new team component passing in player first. And then we'll just say hero for the name. Next, we're going to do the same thing for enemy team, making sure we use enemy as the team name or team ID. And then here we get to name the enemy whatever we want. By the end of this video, this is going to be dynamic to whichever enemy that we're fighting. But, but for now, I'll just say bully. Now, each one of these team components is going to start with that empty list of combatants. And so what we want to do is right under here, as we are iterating through all of the combatants to tack on the ID and to initialize each one, we're also going to add the combatant to the team that it belongs to. So I'll bring in some code here. As we iterate through each one, if the combatant team is player, we're going to go ahead and push to the player team combatants list. And same thing for the enemy. Now, after we've done all that work, we can finally initialize our team components, and that'll put them on screen. So I'll say this dot player team init to the battle element. And we'll do the same thing for the enemy team. Now, this will be totally unstyled so far because we haven't added any CSS for team, but let's see what it looks like. Here it is on screen. It actually doesn't look too terrible. Our SVG icons are showing up. Uh, but they're all over here on the left side of the screen. They're all stacking and they're all active and all dead, which clearly isn't right. So let's add some CSS. By the time our CSS is in, we should only have one active pizza for team and alive pizzas should not show this dead X. Now in the first battle video, we also created a CSS file for team and it's empty. I'm going to go ahead and start bringing in some styles for this. First, the team container is going to be display flex. It'll be position absolute so that the player side can hug the left side of the screen and the enemy side can hug the right side of the screen. Both will sit on top. We want some spacing between the pizza icons and so we'll use flex gap for that. Next, we only wanna show that gray X if the pizza is dead. And so I'll bring in some styles here. By default, we're gonna take those dead paths and display none them. And same with the active pizza indicator. If we're not active, we don't wanna show that. We'll use those data attributes to toggle on the display of those paths. So if the pizza icon has data dead true on it, we'll go ahead and display those dead paths. And if it has data active true, we'll display the active pizza indicator paths. Let's see what this looks like so far. With these styles in place, the positioning is correct. And that looks good. But when I finish off this pizza here, we're not going to see any update to this pizza being shown as dead now. Also, we don't have either active pizzas showing. So let's go ahead and fill out that update method. Back in team.js here, in our update method, we wanna iterate through each of our combatants and update the DOM of each icon. And so I'll bring in some code here. We're gonna iterate through each combatant. We're gonna select the icon based on that combatant's ID, which is why we had the ID as a data attribute up here. With that selected, we can check if the HP is alive or not. So less than or equal to zero. And that's how we'll populate the data dead flag that'll end up being true or false. And then same concept with data active. If you remember, this is the same thing that shows the pizza on screen or not. So we're able to hook into that same thing to update this icon. This is already running when we start the component. We also want to make sure that this method runs anytime our combatants update. Like if a change comes in that's going to affect their HP, that might affect the setting of this data attribute now. So here, this, this might change on a state change event, and then this data active might change on one of those replace events. So let's go ahead and find our battle events. And in both of those cases, we're gonna go ahead and run the update method on both teams. So here we are in state change towards the bottom here. Right before we resolve, we'll go ahead and run the update on each one. So we'll say this.battle.playerTeam.update. And same for enemy team. And we'll do the same thing after a replace event. So we'll find replace, and right before we resolve, we'll go ahead and bring those same lines in. Let's see how this looks on screen now. It boots up the same, so that's good. Let's go ahead and start attacking. So now you see Call Me Kale has been ruined. This icon is updated to show the dead path. So this team now has one dead pizza, one alive pizza. This one is still active. We still see it on screen. Let's see what happens now. Portobello Express has come in. The active icon has updated. So it seems that this is all wired up and ready to go. 
Now as an extra bit of challenge, if you wanted to pursue this, you could display more information about each pizza in the icon here. Say that one of my pizzas has a negative status on it and you wanna show some kind of different icon that's like clumsy or saucy or any other kind of status that you've created. You could layer in different paths to show that same kind of thing or affect the icon here however you want. We're not gonna cover that here in this video series, but in theory, you could show as much state about each pizza as you wanted in this component here. So in the next video, we're gonna wrap up our battle sequences by integrating them back into the overworld. You'll be able to start different battles by talking to different people, and your state will persist between battles, so you can battle back to back to back. Thank you so much for following along with this series. Here's the reminder to please like and subscribe if you're getting value out of this. Come join our Discord if you're working on a game. There are people in there that want to play it, including me, so we'd love to see you there. The link is below. There's also a Ko-fi donation link down there if you want to support this channel directly. Thanks again so much for watching. I'll see you next time.